Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga, and this is episode number 484. That's 484 of the Agassino Zynga Show. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Great, amazing, good to know, good to hear. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash the like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If this is via the podcast, I have a five star review and a share will help the show to go a long way. And of course, support for your patrons. Welcome at patreon.com forward slash A G O S T I N H O. For more information, you can click the show in the description. You can find a link to there and you'll find all the bonus content that I upload on the Patreon. So make sure you register and get involved and subscribe on there. Make sure you get involved. But yeah, how, how what's the deal? How's it going? You all right? Great, amazing. How's me? You know, pretty decent, all things considered. The vibes are a bit off still, I feel like. I feel like the world hasn't really, um, you know, got back to any kind of equilibrium. I feel like it's still a bit off kilter. People are still trying to make the best of what they have. They're trying to enjoy themselves as much as possible, but everybody, it feels like I still got this weird sort of like um, cloud hugging around everyone's head where they're sort of like, you know, holding out or you no know, they're kind of anticipating the worst right whether it's a lockdown or whatever people are sort of i feel like still in the edges of their seat um so it's a little bit of a strange environment out there in the world today but again maybe it's just me maybe i'm looking too far into it but so far judging by everything that's happening in the world it does feel like you know the world is slightly on fire in certain places and other places people are just pretending that the world isn't on fire and covering their eyes and their ears and just dancing to the non-existent beat that's radiating within the you know the space between their ears i think that's what most people are doing i know that's what i'm doing and you know it's probably the best option it's probably the best way to go about things because unfortunately there's not much we can do i've seen a lot of people doing some posturing online with all the afghanistan stuff like oh my god i can't concentrate at work i'm so distracted Ugh. it's like shut up you know what i mean like all this flipping virtue signaling performative nonsense is just a little bit cringe it makes you want to throw up in your own mouth um it's kind of you know it makes me think like all that performative stuff is similar to if i was about to have like a sweetie flipping mcdonald's meal yeah, I mean, it might look good on the eye, but the moment you start eating it, you start realizing why maybe dripping your burger, your Big Mac in sweetie and sour sauce isn't probably the best idea before you go and play football. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. But anyway, that aside, the Premier League football was back this weekend. That was beneficial. That brought me a lot of joy. I also watched a couple of live streams. I watched the um, Ostergut, um, or Ostergut, Ostergutten, whatever you pronounce that fucking thing, the label from Bergheim. They did a little live stream live from the actual club itself, which if if ever you needed to see a um, representation of how things have changed and how the landscape of clubbing and going out has changed maybe forever and how much the industry's standards and things that they're willing and not willing to do has kind of altered drastically, Look no further than, you know, uh, Bergheim basically allowing cameras to stream directly from inside their club. Now, don't get me wrong. They didn't let people stream exactly in the booth. They probably they let them kind of do it on that um, hall, whatever, the place where they do the concerts in the main kind of gangway sort of area thing. I forgot how you call it. So it wasn't exactly, it didn't exactly give you a good idea of what it looks like on the inside. It's just do like one perspective from one side. But still, you, you know, if you would have told me a few years ago that they would have had a full program of live streaming that would have taken place on their ART channel, I would have laughed you out of the room. But obviously things have changed. People on their label or on their booking roster need to play. They still want to make sure that their name is ringing bells and people are reminded of their legacy and what they do. No better thing to they can remind people than putting up these live streams. So that's a fairly comforting thing to see for somebody like myself you know someone that records my own sets and just racks them up on youtube it's quite cool to see like the the kind of leveling of the play field right that's what's basically happened with this whole lockdown and stuff where effectively mixes and stuff you know there's nothing separate obviously apart from skill and execution and experience all that sort of stuff there's nothing really separating what i'm doing live streaming on my own youtube channel and also what these guys are doing when they're live streaming on their youtube channels and streaming it from their clubs there's no difference especially if i go to a proper studio and rent their equipment it's just the exact same thing um if anything it's just the end product that you're basically having to compete with but still it allows everybody to compete at the same level so from a purely motivational entrepreneurial side of things i think it's a good thing i think it allows like i said more people to take part um it allows more people to basically feel like they have a chance to basically put their hat in a ring who knows maybe if you upload a good set or two and you keep 
doing it on a consistent basis you might get the intention of a certain place of a certain club institution and then suddenly your name then starts ringing bells and you get booked in all these places and your life changes forever whereas a few years ago i feel like that wouldn't have ever happened you know i mean people would have just ignored what you did they would have just disappeared into the flipping black hole of the internet but now because people are more attuned or they're more used to watching live streams and chilling that's probably changed things for the good going forward and yeah i welcome it i got be honest i welcome it but it is a bit of a trip to see it so if you haven't checked it out before do check it out it's on the channel called a r t e um this is a youtube channel um a german based one where they stream loads of you know concerts and shows and gigs and stuff from djs to bands and whatnot and obviously they've got an entire bit of programming there that they did specifically with ostergut um with loads of people of course on their lineup on their roster friends and family too my favorite one stand up so far has been the um the one with gerd jansen and what's his face let's see if i can get up here on my phone actually should i get up my phone get on the computer let's see if i can get on the computer there's one with Gerd Janssen and, oh, what's his face? And answer code request, I think, right? Answer code request, yeah. Let me see if I can get it up on here. It's on the ART channel. ART concert, Ostergutten. Osgood, is it Osgood? Osgood, what am I saying? Yes, it's Osgutten. Osgutten, yeah, this is the one. So if it's this one, um, blah, blah, blah. is this one that one? I don't know which one is it that one or that one no it's this one it's a seven hour one so it's this one here let me get up on the screen for you hope it doesn't play too loud let's put the sound a bit low and yeah they've got all the listings show so it's called Ostergut um us de halle is it am Berghain. it's a really good set recommend you check it out And if you scroll down to the description, if you scroll down to the description, you'll see obviously all the timestamps of all the people playing and stuff. And obviously my standout set so far has been answer code requests and God Jansen. It's about four hours, nine minutes and 40 seconds into the video itself. And again, a few others that you can check out, but this is probably one of my favorite ones. And like I said, it doesn't really show much of the overall club. Don't get me wrong. So I think that's probably a smart way to go about doing something like this. You still have to be there to actually see what it's like but it does it is interesting just to see them you know even offering their space up to do a live stream is definitely something that shows you that we've definitely changed for the better for the worse i think as a society or a scene who knows what the deal is but yeah check it out if you're that way inclined available on youtube pretty decent sets all in all and again you know to end it they've got steffi and virginia playing you know that's a flipping long running collaboration probably more than a decade i think might have been one of the very first sort of like tech housey type tracks i heard that wasn't the stuff that jamie jones plays like the proper tech house stuff right that yours track remember when that was ringing off so definitely it's nice to see them collaborating in a sort of live setting or in you know their best probable um representation of what a live set would be djing you know sefi djing and obviously virginia singing on the mic it's a really cool combination between the both of them but yeah definitely check it out if you're that way inclined a pretty decent thing all in Let's get that off the screen. What else happened? Oh, pardon. Oh, yeah. Man United beat Leeds 5-1 in the opening day fixture of the Premier League. A result that I think I was surprised by. The performance probably not so much because I think if ever there was a perfect team for United to play on the opening day of the Premier League would be Leeds. As much as great as they are for their intensity and their counter-attacking play and their one-two touching passes when it comes to defending because they kind of basically do you know they basically mark one-on-one -on -one all over the pitch it then requires it then obviously offers opportunity for you to create spaces if you're able to get people to run off the off their men you're able to play balls inside of space you can clearly quick quickly open up the entire pitch and if you watch the game itself you'd see there was loads of pitch to for place to run into a good example being mason green was finished where Paul Popper picks up the ball on the halfway line bends it on the inside of their right back or left back and then Mason Greenwood runs into it and hits it um across the goalkeeper and into the bottom corner and that was a great example of just how much space there was in the game because against another team where they might you know have a few more bodies behind the ball um 
oh, it's in front of the ball, in front of our position, in front of us as we're playing. It's very unlikely you're going to create those kind of spaces. So, all in all, very good performance. Obviously, Paul Pogba being able to get four, you know, assist, even though Graham Sooners didn't think it was worthy of praise because he's a hundred million pound player, which he isn't eighty nine million. But you know, details don't matter when it comes to those kind of guys. I still feel like you know they needed to get a performance like that under their belt just to get the wheels turning, especially when you consider all the other teams in the top four one as well, especially some of the big title contenders. So you need to start off strong. You need to start off with intent. You need to kind of sort of semi send a signal, but not really, but still just show, remind people that what your time you're on specifically. And I think we did that with that performance all in. Um, so very impressed with that standout thing obviously Pogba's performance was incredible um Lindelof played really awesome as well I think that is definitely feel like it's a reaction to the Rafael Varane situation because if there's one thing we know about football players or about anybody that puts themselves on a sort of public you know who offers themselves up to the public in terms of how they earn a living whether an entertainer or an artist usually the best ones have some element of um, a delusional sense of self, right? They usually think way more highly of themselves than others because you need that, right? You need that kind of um, self-determination, self actualization that belief system ingrained in you in order for you to condition yourself to all the blows and the knockbacks and the insults and the criticisms you're going to get along the way from people who don't exactly believe in the way you believe people who don't believe in the way you believe in yourself right you need to be like that so sometimes i think people that criticize people that are a bit too arrogant or whatever maybe in those kind of fields i think it's a little bit over the board because i don't think there's a way to exist living a life in the public eye without having some level of delusion you need it in order to kind of keep you strong and keep you going so with that said it wouldn't surprise me if somebody like a victor lindelof deep down when he saw the news of us being linked to referral of and then obviously the deal being concluded he was thinking now nah, i'm not the what makes you think i'm gonna be the one that's gonna get taken out of the team why doesn't Maguire get taken out of the team or somebody else or they change the entire formation yeah i mean he's probably so assured or so kind of sure of himself that he thinks no 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 i'm not actually the weak link in this team the weak link is a b c or d do you know what i mean it wouldn't surprise me because we already seen what happened allegedly there's a story going out there that supposedly referee around wanted obviously number four, the number that he had at Real Madrid, the number that he's synonymously linked to. And obviously at United, the person occupying number four is Phil Jones, a player who's been, you know, beset by injuries and poor form and just hasn't got his United career started at all. I think he might have been the last Sarah Ferguson signing as well. So he'd been at the club for a long time. We haven't been incapable of moving him on because he's always injured. So no one wants to buy him. And of course he earns those money. So it's hard to have clubs to sign him. And allegedly, sorry about that, the story is that um, he refused to give up his number four to Rafa Varane. That's allegedly the story. So Rafa won the number four, Phil Jones refused to give it. Which makes you think, why would somebody that's you know perpetually injured never plays when he isn't injured and quite clearly isn't good enough for to play for United week in, week out? Why wouldn't he feel like this would be the perfect time to maybe you know hand over the baton and go somewhere else because deep down he feels like he's still the guy he still feels like he's one of the best center backs at the club which again shows you the delusion that some people have but you again you need to have it in order because you know if you're phil jones you have to be delusional to still be a professional football player because everybody and their mum keeps telling you that you're a waste of space so the only way to get yourself motivated to get yourself ready to perform at that level is to keep telling yourself that you are you know, one of England's best centre backs and you're going to prove everybody wrong and everybody thinks he's going to take your place, but you're actually going to take his. It's flipping crazy. So it's quite cool to see Vitor Lindelof performing the way he did. Obviously, against it's against Leeds. It's the first game of the season. More often than not, the thing with Luke, you know, the, thing, the same thing goes with Luke Shaw. For all the hype they get for individual games or spurts of good form, if you're actually a United fan, you know how... Um, you know how much they fly to deceive how often they turn in mediocre performances and get away with it because there's no one really to challenge their position so the one thing you would hope is that if they do start to falter that Oli would have the guts to change them even if they have played six games prior that were good if they played two games that are terrible or three or four 
they need to have the courage to be able to change them for the quality we have on the bench and hopefully now there's no excuses because that's the one thing as well that I would and, and uh, one on the list of things that I think you'd criticise Oli for is his lack of kind of rotation he doesn't necessarily trust his squad and I don't think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he doesn't think the players are good enough I just don't think you trust his squad outside the first team um, I don't think you could sign enough players for him to play I don't think he just will he's just not that kind of manager everyone's got their different sort of profile and I think so far he's proved to us over the years that he doesn't necessarily like rotating his side too often which is odd too when you consider that he was a perpetual sub but regardless um it'll be nice to see that change but um fluid attack midfield looked pretty stable interesting that as soon as Puck Bobble went off the team kind of flattered to deceive there wasn't a lot of kind of um interplay and you know uh you know link play and whatever communication it just felt a little bit flat whenever pop up one of the pitch that's interesting to note so we definitely have to work out a solution for a sub or somebody that would probably fit that mold if it makes sense i don't know you know what i mean so that was interesting um obviously greenwood finishing ability is still up there um bruno fernandez of course finishing ability we already know about that but if anything i would like to see if, if possible i know it's not going to happen but I would also like to see an evolution in Bruno Fernandes' game. We all know he can score goals. We all know he's clinical in front of goal. We all know his shooting ability is second to none. He's probably only behind Son in his ability to always kind of hit the target or make the keeper work, right, in that regard. So he's really, really good. But I would also like to see an evolution in his play where he's able to play as a conventional midfielder more so and able to kind of fill in the holes in the midfield if need be because he goes wandering too much and starts playing up front basically all these goals were basically striker goals but i'd like him to see him play a little bit more like a conventional number eight um number 10 and actually sit in that midfield and um dictate play that way or influence play that way that would be great to see if possible uh fred got on the score sheet as well that's when you know we're on the mad one when fred scores he again played decently another good illustration of just how weird this team is in the middle i think mctominay and fred are both kind of half dms right together they're still not a full dm so you definitely still need a sitting you know combative athletic you know the defensive midfielder who can play a position again i don't think you need somebody that great with the ball I think even an Ndidi would do the, the job really well because then you could just pass the ball onto the person next to him and then get that person to kind of, you know, uh, move the ball further up the pitch. But I think if we were able to have a real commanding defensive midfielder alongside a Fred or a McTominay in the centre, I think that team, the whole makeup of it would completely change. It would free up the wing backs to push up further forward. It would give centre backs a bit of extra protection. Like, I think that would be a really, really good way to play. But, you know, it looks like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't really think that we need a dm because we've never been linked with one seriously apart from declan rice's and sound he goes if you can him as a dm which i don't really count him as a dm i think even more as a box of box midfielder but still um decent performance um again nothing to get super overly excited about only the first game of the season we didn't win nothing um but still good to beat your local rivals 5-1 at home especially with the fans in the pitch especially considering all the hullabaloo's that happened outside of the stadium before the game it was definitely good to shut those guys up so yeah 5-1 can we play you guys every week 5-1 can we play you guys every week next on the list what else do we have oh yes an update here courtesy of billboard it says Kanye West's latest Thunder event is the most watched Apple music live stream ever and it got me thinking if you're a diehard Kanye fan, like a stan, which I've never been, I always think stan, standing artist is always a bit bizarre considering the amount of musical artists that exist in the world. To stand one specific person just seems a little bit over the top and unnecessary. And again, as a lover of music, I tend to just, you know, dabble um, in just about every single genre and get into loads of different artists, loads of different albums and moments and scenes and whatever yeah you know i mean it's just no it's just weird to fact to obsess over one person like that but i do understand that something like a Kanye does have that kind of cult stand fan base around him but a lot of them are usually from what i've seen especially if you go on places like you know the ktt um formerly known as the Kanye to the a forum most of those guys are obsessed with him mostly from a musical standpoint right from his ability to create amazing moments great albums features memorable lyrics memorable bars live shows blah 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 also the fashion and 
footwear stuff is great it's an add-on but most of those guys are you know infatuated with him because of the music and again music makes sense because you know it provides a soundtrack to people's lives so i was wondering if you're a kanye stan are you a little bit annoyed that all of these records are being broken kanye's allegedly made seven million dollars off the back of that donda live stream event it was visually one of the most incredible things to watch maybe one of the only live streams i watched in recent years where i've kind of stayed up late to kind of catch it myself i've even ended up ripping the flipping live album um from a website and putting that on my phone because the album isn't hasn't dropped yet right and the merch around it all this sort of stuff you know the collaboration of course with demler from balenciaga and formerly of um it's great but all in all you care about the music and there's still no album and there isn't really a concrete date out there every date that gets uploaded or updated onto apple keeps changing first is 22nd 25th whatever you know what i mean we don't know when it's going to come out it comes out when it comes out but i would imagine if you're a stan you must be a little bit annoyed at this point to get to come to this moment where all you want is the music but kanye seems to be it i wouldn't say taking a piss but it seems like he would never do this sort of rollout or this sort of kind of release with if it had to concern his shoes or his fashion stuff. It wouldn't do it, would he? Do you get the feeling he wouldn't do it? He wouldn't mess people around like that. He'd want to kind of, you know, if he says he's going to drop it on this 10th, it'll be the 10th. You know what I mean? Whereas with music, it feels like he takes a piss a lot out of the listeners more so because I guess he feels like he can because he has more, I won't say clout, but he has more kind of, room to do whatever the hell he wants because people still regard him as a genius in music whereas in fashion and the design part of things even though he's still operating at a very high level it feels like he's always having to try and prove his worth right is that does that make sense to you i don't know maybe it's just me but it's just it's just interesting to see that all these records are being broken and there's still no album in insight so the article from billboard says the following the second live stream from Mercedes-Benz Stadium pulled in 5.4 million viewers plus a possibly record-breaking 7 million in revenue from in-person merchandise sales. In-person only, which I re you, you have to remember or you have to kind of keep in mind, is pretty insane. Especially when you think of most people when they do tours or they do live shows, they usually tie in the sale of merch um in store in person and also they also open up their own merch store on their website to facilitate international or other fans who might see them later on in the tour to go buy their merch as well they do it hand in hand usually for the most part of course the priority is to go to the show itself because merch you know usually takes long to arrive and the shipping times are always crazy because they usually take your money up front before they actually put in the order to print the shirts if you didn't know this is why they usually put the four to six weeks flipping turnaround time because they want to make sure they have the money in the bank in order to kind of afford all the printing costs and the shipping and whatnot that is insane to think that they made seven mil on in-person merchandise sales only which again it makes sense because you know there's high margins on all the merch that he's selling and stuff but fuck you know it says here, Kanye West on the listening party in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta last Thursday, August 5th, set the new live stream record for Apple, pulling in 5.4 million viewers, sources to Billboard. And again, only things like, you know, OVO versus Kanye so far I've been able to kind of garner that reaction for people. Like, I, you know, I stayed up really late to watch the live stream of the show. So I can only imagine what people around other parts of the world are doing. It continues says for context the total is more than double the current live stream record on Twitch and approaches 2020's primetime Emmys, which pulled in an audience of 6.1 million people across the US last September, making it one of the biggest live stream events in the past year. Sources say the Donda Listing streaming party it could generate 1.1 million tweets at its peak, outpacing Twitter activity for the 2020 MTV VMAs, which is a bit easy to do. VMAs are terrible. West held its first Donda Listing party in July. 23rd da, da, da. so the second event august the fifth year said they pulled in seven million in revenue in in-person merchandise sales sort of says the highest gross in u.s tour since 1999 when billboard box score began tracking touring data is taylor swift's reputation tour in 2018 which grossed under seven million per show jesus the number also matches the revenue for the first drop of the easy gap versus collaboration with gap which former ceo todd yahoo generated seven million overnight um when the 200 blue puffer coat was released in june so that is insane that's not even you know i mean that's not even including his cap collaboration but again like i said as a fan surely this must fill you with dread because if this guy is making this amount this amount of money from merch without you having to listen to the because that's the thing i was thinking 
does the merch influence does the music influence the success of the merch even though you don't have it in your phone unless you you know got the fugazi versions or you ripped the live show version the fact that the music generally does sound really good and maybe sounds like the best work that he's done since my beautiful dark twisted fantasy right not including all the same pablos and the yades and shit which were you know fairly mediocre as it goes in terms of kanye's catalog but i wonder if the music wasn't as good whether or not the merch would have done as great as well but i don't think it would have because you think back to the saint pablo and the yay merch that all did pretty well everyone was flipping falling over themselves to get those fucking long sleeves Do you remember i remember all you guys that were fighting over those fucking garbage long sleeves um and tying them around your neck like can't you like people honestly his fans him for all there's a few people like that who have stands even travis has got stands like that too people that dress like them it's just bizarre i never understood that but that aside um it must be frustrating if you're a Kanye West fan because it looks like the album's you know never coming out there's rumors supposedly that he's waiting for Drake to drop which is you know from in terms of a musical competition competitive standpoint I'm all for because in theory you would hope that they're both silently pushing each other to create their best work and all in all who's gonna win us the consumer the listeners we're going to win ultimately because to you know giant creatives and talents within their fields are going to be doing their best to out maneuver and outperform and out deliver each other and in all in all the fans are going to be able to get two seminal you know for provoking changing works going forward i guess the other thing i've noticed all about the album having listened to it obviously from the rip that i've got which is a fairly decent rip i'm not going to be honest it's a really really well done one it's been cut and tagged properly i, I changed the tight the flipping screen the cover for the thing though i made it whatever from the live show i think they tried to put the actual religion on the cover but it doesn't make sense but the most entertaining part about the album is the fact that you can listen to it and there's there's no you know there's no ease alongside any other tracks you know usually it says e for explicit so every track is you know safe for school um you've got some of the most you know gutter you know gang affiliated rappers in the history or within the scene at the moment essentially trying their best not to swear not to curse um not to say anything too salacious and it lends for a really interesting once a once in a blue moon sort of perspective or way of them presenting themselves because you're never going to hear fug you're never going to hear Fabio foreign and all these other people like sounding the way they do sound this album anywhere else because now of course they're bringing their a game because kind a legend and they're also being asked to um create within these constraints right being asked to do certain things not say this not say that and it provides for some of the best stuff i've heard in a while when it comes to collaboratively like this sounds incredible this sounds like what a dj Khaled album should sound like that's what i think you know the collaboration is a bit much but this is what it sounds like what it should sound like a good celebration amalgamation of all these interesting artists and scene at the moment you know put on these really amazing different unique beats that bring out the best in each person while still challenging them blah 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 um really really good of course you know standout verse i think mostly has to be Fabio Forum because I'm not really a fan of his um I, especially when he was coming up you know alongside Pop Smoke during them times I always thought he was like a poor imitation of him but over the years I've grown to kind of like his voice and I have to be honest he absolutely murdered this was it called off the grid yeah track number eight with playboy car obviously he skates all over playboy that's not he, that's not hard to do when you're actually barring him up but oof, he came strong that track he came absolutely strong one of maybe the standout verse i think on the entire project and considering who else is rapping on it it says a lot about his um pen game but definitely something i wasn't i was definitely wasn't expecting it's five year four and absolutely skating on that track called off the grid um it's about what is it 32 it goes on for pretty long to be honest he smashes it really really good verse so definitely check it out if you haven't already and i guess when the album comes out it comes out in it but we have no idea moving on to other news in the music world um what you call it bang your doors nines and free him until he's backwards and all that malarkey unfortunate story here says rapper nines and miss plans to import cannabis from poland and spain this is a story i think that broke a few weeks ago or a few months ago and it went kind of quiet but now we've got an update regarding this case and considering how high up his star was and where he was regarded and the fact that his album was critically acclaimed and all this good stuff it's a shame to see what has transpired over the last few years or last couple of years 
It says the following, Rapper Nines is facing jail after admitting a plot to import 28 kilograms of cannabis into the UK from Spain and Poland. The Hazen rapper real name Courtney Freckton, 31, pleaded guilty today to drugs and money laundering charges. Nines, who last year topped the UK album chart with his third studio album, Crabs in the Bucket, appeared in Harrow Court alongside Jason Thompson from Barnet. The men are arrested in June after raids across London and Bourne Wood. The pair admitted conspiracy to import a class B cannabis into the UK from Poland and Spain and conspiracy to transport criminal cash between March 10th and July the 3rd of last year. You would never think, right, a rapper in, of his ilk or a rapper of his standing would be in a position to do such a thing. But again, you know, you don't really know what these guys are battling, you know, outside of the music. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what real situations they've come from, who they're associated with. And sometimes it can be a lot easier than it could, it could, it could be a lot easier said rather than done to completely disassociate yourself from that lifestyle, which is why if there are people who you like, who you follow, who were about a certain life and have changed their life around you should do everything with your power to support them back them and let them know that you appreciate what you they've done and you appreciate how far they've come along their journey because it's not a given this is a good example it's really not a given any moment any time things can change and you could just go and revert back to type because the truth of the matter is more likely than not nines was probably on the road longer than he was a you know a certified rapper or artist or celebrity or had money you know he probably made yeah this let's just say this it probably goes without saying that he probably made money illegally longer than he did legally so to kind of get that out of your system is very difficult to do especially when it comes fast especially when it comes easy especially when you're naturally good at it because you know the one thing about nines is all that you know in terms of business he definitely was about his business knew how to maneuver certain deals and brand collaborations outside of music which makes a lot of sense because he had a lot of practice doing this allegedly um so i can only imagine how difficult it must have been to completely disassociate yourself and break yourself off their shackles especially what people don't understand too if these guys are legitimately your friends right i grew up in really shitty in neighborhoods with people that had gone have gone to prison or were in prison for a whole number of different sort of crimes and sometimes you can't help you associate with because of the yeah, they just happen to be your friends and you're in the hood. The only thing that saved me is because I was able to go to uni, I was able to get a job, so that constantly kept me away from things because I was busy. But if I didn't have nothing to do and I wanted to hang out, I'd just be with these people too and I'd get caught up in stuff too just because I was with them. So it's fairly... It, so when people say, oh yeah, just step away and do other things and move on, it's just like, it's not that easy though, especially when you're about it and you're there, do you know what I mean, day in, day out, it's not that hard, it's not that easy to do, so it's a shame again to see, but I'm sure somebody of his ilk knew there's risks involved, knew what would be at risk as well if he was to get caught, so I'm sure mentally he's probably prepared for this more so than anybody, but still, it's not something that you like to see somebody go through. And it said here, the plot involved one successful importation and a second attempted one with the total amount of cannabis said to be 28 kg the court heard. I'd assume it wasn't just cannabis. I don't know if a lot of people just import cake, you know, weed. I'm sure maybe some class A's were involved, but he probably, you know, pleaded to the cannabis just to get a lesser charge and to kind of ensure this thing didn't go to trial and kind of get long and drawn out. I would assume so. Who knows? Um, Prosecutor Genevieve Reed. So the money laundering charge related to a $98,000 debt, um, as well as the value of the drugs. Nines and Thompson both denied further accounts of conspiracy to supply cocaine and conspiracy to supply cannabis. And Miss Reed said prosecutors will not be seeking a trial on those charges. So, of course, you know, they did a, some sort of agreement of a plea deal, it seems like. Um, the race took place after infiltrating the crypt encrypted messaging service EncroChat, a network used by thousands of criminals internationally that was brought down after being tracked by French investigators. That EncroChat thing has absolutely killed so many people, man. RIP, let's work. Those who know, know. Um, one of those legendary vendors, he went down and a few others. Um, it's just sad to see, and like, especially during the, I think it was the second lockdown or third lockdown, I think that might have happened. So people were, you know, desperately trying to numb themselves from the pain of having to live you know in a kind of um 
perpetual lockdown and then the people obviously selling the stuff will obviously trying to make a quick buck during a time of unprecedented uncertainty when it comes to employment and just in general when it comes to moving stuff around the world and it was getting a lot harder um around that time as well especially with brexit getting finalized and all that malarkey was making it very very difficult so i'm sure all those things added to the fact that it made it easier for the feds to come in and do a clean sweep on people using that encro chat platform app service on the phone whatever it was the pair are facing a lengthy jail sentence and were remanded in custody by judge jo uh, by judge rosa dean who adjourned the case for sentencing nines made his rapping career following um growing up in Hazen and was named the best hip-hop act last year the mobile awards his chart topping album which beat metal uh, titans metallica to the top spot of his release secured the album of the year seeing of competition from stormzy j huss liana la harvest and malaya so definitely a certified star who unfortunately is going to go and sit down for a bit hopefully not too long you would hope um seeing as he's agreed to a plea deal um maybe they can attest to his good behavior i don't know what can go on it but it's still free him in my eyes he's innocent he did nothing wrong just trying to you know feed his family and put on for his scene um you know whatever he was doing it is what it is hopefully he's freed very soon is able to kind of get back on that horse and be able to do better do good um considering his standing considering how well regarded he is i would assume if he when he does get out he will be fairly okay i think he'll be welcomed back with open arms if anything that will probably add to the legend of him anyway but for sure you know being where he was and you know having to sit down for a while off the back of this case is probably not the most um greatest of outcomes but you know we have to sometimes learn the hard way in life in it and sometimes no amount of sitting downs of people telling you to kind of get serious and focus on the music is ever gonna make you change when be something like this especially at his age you know what i mean it's not like he's 22 anymore do you know what i mean do, going to sit down in jail at 31 years old especially when you've been given an out the universe gave you an option to kind of leave the road and you purposely spat back in his face and went back on the road it's just a bit hard to take but again lessons need to be learned and if there's one thing about life that we've known over the last few years especially with covid is that regardless of how naive or how oblivious you are going to be the situation life is definitely going to come and remind you where exactly you're at and maybe this is it in it so three nines regardless hopefully the trial goes well and he doesn't get a super super long sentence and he's able to get back to doing what he does best next on the list we've got this random article here i don't really know who this young lady is but this is courtesy of the shade borough says molly may reveal she turned down two million deal with a high street brand and for some reason everyone's going crazy over this and celebrating it like it's a an achievement of some sort when this should just be the norm but then it makes me think you know especially following all the stuff that's happening with Austin McBroom and all this social gloves and that event and the fact that he's supposedly allegedly maybe maybe not scammed loads of people it definitely needs to be a kind of reminded to people that maybe not all influencers are made equal and some are i wouldn't say ethical but but some have some sort of say was it moral or brand integrity whatever some people do have taste and they do kind of abide by some you know semblance of a um rationale or you know whatever it may be when it comes to selecting the brands and stuff they work with but anyway this is it so it's courtesy of the shade barrier says money may hague Hulk Hague famously signed a five half a million deal with Pretty Little Thing after she left the Love Island and she has since said that many of the brands she works with now are those who supported her before she went to the show. To help her with her brand choices, her manager Fran to support her and then tell all YouTube video. Um, Fran teamed up to spill up all the business side of their career. Fran spilled some industry secrets about how she and her were together, including the news that the YouTube star turned on a two million dollar deal last year. So let's play a bit of the clip and then I'll offer my um comment on the side.
Hmm. So you'd have to be a little bit of a of a incredibly naive, somewhat bordering on idiotic person to ever think whatever influencer you're following online just because they put an ad next to their post or because they're advertising something on their platform, did they have any interest on in the service or product or whatever it is that they're being offered to advertise on it? You, I would imagine at this point, especially with the prevalence of people who are putting ad on their post or, you know, branding or marketing or being used as an advertising platform in order to boost up some of these brands, that now we're at a point where most people would understand that these are just opportunities for your people that you follow to just put some money in their bank, right? Money in the back pocket um, to align themselves with a certain brand. And it's less so a, it's less so a kind of, um, what do you call it? it's less of an endorsement of the product they're using to their fan base and more so just an opportunity for them to get some cash, like a cash grab, essentially, which is not a bad thing. But I don't think most people that follow these influencers are thinking, oh, yeah, because she, cause she posts about this scrunchie. This is the best scrunchie in the industry. And that's the one that she uses and all this stuff. So, no, she's posting the scrunchie because this brand is on this company is offering her a bucket of the cash and she wants to make a quick amount of money in order to kind of get to the next step. And I've, yes, usually from what I've seen, it seems like there is a bit of a let's just take whatever we can in the beginning kind of mentality when you're an influencer in the hope that once you get to the point where you can start rejecting and turning down deals and then strategically placing yourself in a, at a level where you can then suddenly line up with the brands that you actually give a shit about right because the ones in the beginning are usually stuff that you don't even know they're usually small startups they're usually brands that you know are just trying to get a foothold in the industry they're trying to boost their signal they're trying to get more uh, you know eyes on their thing whatever it may be but they're not the real real high level brands that all these girls want to work with so that's one thing um and then also there's a side of things that makes me think as well who would wanna it's interesting the the kind of profile of a person who would want to go on a girl like this page in order to look for direction on what to buy and what is kind of fitting because you'd think part of the reason why influencers are quite handy from a branding point of view is that essentially you don't have to pay them the same amount that you'd have to pay like a legit model right or somebody like that is legitimately famous so if you can't afford that sort of rate the best option to do is to go for somebody that's kind of very well known but also in a very niche kind of a niche level of fame right which is what this person is right if you watch reality tv and you know this sort of stuff you know who they are if you don't then you don't but the ones that do do so what you're doing is that you're doing a very targeted kind of marketing drive in order to kind of speak directly to the people you want to speak to who happen to be her fans cool no problem but again it's not as if it's a given that everything that you're kind of placing next to this girl's name is going to sell. It's not, it's, it's not a given that everything you place next to her name is going to be a good fit. And also it's not a given that everything that you place next to, her is good, next to her is going to make sense from a branding congruency kind of point of view or synergy, whatever it may be. So in one side, it is quite admirable to see somebody turning down a big bag because they feel as if the brand doesn't, you know, it's not, they don't want to work with them. But you know this rollout. I think we saw Kim do it and a few other people. It's quite a clever rollout to do to announce this sort of stuff in public because if anything, it kind of, of course, allows you to generate more clicks off the back of your name. It gets people talking about you, like myself, I don't really know. So it gets it kind of includes and amplifies your voice. It then allows other brands to to be a little bit more forthright about how they approach you because they might think that oh you might give them more of a look i might give them an opportunity to work with them because it might be a brand that you maybe were fine with or you were fine promoting before you had a, a check in your account so it's a kind of a clever backward sort of way of promoting yourself in that way by putting this out in public in the first place and in general too i don't know man i don't necessarily see you turning down a two million dollar bag as a way to me to think you're more have more integrity than other influencers i don't think there's such a thing as integrity because the whole premise of being an influencer is that your platform and your square on your social media platform is essentially uh, essentially um open to the highest bidder really in it because if that brand decided to really back up the truck and you know decide to up the offer to five ten million dollar ten million pounds for sure she'll change your mind do you know what i mean so there definitely is a figure that would make you want to drop your morals and do away with your um with your preference in terms of brand for the money and stuff so it's a little bit bizarre thing to kind of put out there 
but again maybe it's more of a girl thing girls like a little bit of direction and maybe a little bit more of insight and heads up and certain stuff like this because you know you look at some magazine basically she's just like a living breathing gratia magazine or something in it recommendations giving you insights into my life what i'm doing relationships health wealth family blah 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 and then also here's uh my favorite overcoat or here's my favorite pair of shoes i like to wear when i go to the beach you know that sort of nonsense so it does make sense in some regard but it is a bit of a weird thing to kind of flex and promote on the you turn of the deal it's like you know you're an influencer you you're not really i don't really subscribe to you for your integrity i subscribe to you specifically because i might like your look i might think we have a similar body type you might have a similar type of taste so i i would understand that just because you like the stuff that you like most likely than not i'll probably like the stuff that you like that kind of idea but it's not an integrity thing you don't really i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't anyway i don't really follow these people so i don't really know what the deal is but yeah congrats to her and regardless we move on Next, of course, we just touch this briefly because, you know, again, it's not my foe. It's not my forte and not something that I am that really um well versed in or educated on to make any kind of you know discernible comment. But we definitely need to touch upon what's going down in Afghanistan and the Taliban essentially seizing power over the last ten days. Um just from a purely um naive, ignorant, you know, surface level observation point of view, it is interesting to see all the things that we've been complaining about in the West, whether it comes to vaccine passports, whether it comes down to, you know, having to wear masks indoors and all that sort of nonsense and kids going back to university during COVID and all this other stuff and, you know, concerning employment, blah, blah, blah. All of those complaints really do pale into, you know, comparison or pale into significance when you're seeing people in Kabul or wherever the main airport was legitimately hanging off of airplanes and some essentially falling to the deaths desperately trying to escape the rule of the taliban right it does put stuff into perspective you think you know what for all the stuff that we love to complain about which we kind of do i think that's something that you do see um as a symptom of being in the west unfortunately we just love to complain i think of somebody like a wings of redemption kind of streamer right somebody that perpetually loves to complain about their life but does absolutely nothing to change any part of their life because they just love to hear the sound of their own voice complaining i think if anything he is a personification of how we are in the west in general we all kind of should see a little bit in ourselves in wings of redemption and there is a lot to see in wings of redemption so it's evenly spread out but for sure you can't be complaining about streaming and this and that and going out when you know on the other side you can you can do what you want but it's just interesting to contrast to see other people just a few hours away legitimately you know um scared for their lives you know family members passing away i think there was certain videos of scores of you know um afghanis on the street who had been slain in the street from taliban troops coming in early and taking out a whole group of people who were i guess resisting their rule um women who knows what's going to happen to some of them who have kind of decided to go into hiding i think that's why a lot of people are saying some of the plane footage we saw earlier with people in airports mostly if anything majority of men not many women around and the idea behind it is that they weren't sure that the women were going to be treated fairly or looked after during that long arduous journey so the best possible option would be to keep all the women and children at home let the guys you know hustle and try and get over and try and get out of the country secure safe passage and then hopefully bring their family over so you just think about that in it like think about the term what people are living through like you know these people are more than happy to live in afghanistan with a semi you know i guess the democratic um government in some way shape or form they were living pretty ordinary lives just a few weeks ago and then boom in the space of 10 days their complete worlds have been flipped upside down um probably never going to go back to normal ever again especially when you think about how long it took to get to this moment in afghanistan but yeah this article courtesy of the bbc it says how the taliban stormed across afghanistan in 10 days so the taliban swept across afghanistan in just 10 days taking control of town cities across the country the taliban fires took their first provision capital on the 6th of august by 15th of august they were all at the gates of kabul their lightning advances prompted tens of thousands of people to flee their homes many arriving in the afghan capital um others heading to the neighboring countries um there was chaos in kabul as president as as far ghani fled the country and thousands of his countrymen and women tried to do likewise yeah supposedly he just jumped in a big car with suitcases full of money and shit and just fled hilarious absolutely no regard or idea of kind of you know going down with the ship or staying to provide some sort of comfort and care to his citizenship but you know 
these people are terrible lightning Taliban advances emboldened by the withdrawal of the u.s and other international forces in june the taliban already controlled large parts of the country but after the 6th of august the advance accelerated to a new momentum there's a little graphic here showing the bits of red i guess um that show taliban control taking over various parts various big swaths of afghanistan are now under their control um provincial capitals topped in uh, toppled in quick succession by august 8th the taliban had control of um couldn't of kund kund kuduz kuduz um herat lakashaga kandahar followed in the next few days despite 20 years of outside support billions of dollars of funding and extensive program to training the usa support the afghanistan security forces largely collapsed in some areas they did stand and fight in lancashire afghan troops were pinned back in their key positions the taliban attacked repeatedly hundreds of commanders were sent in there to restore order but when the taliban detonated a massive car bomb outside the police headquarters on august 11th the battle was largely over so they're just you know shock and awe and absolute shock and awe so i don't know man not much to say on my part of course it's super sad to see people um going through this amount of pain especially considering what we've gone through in the world in general i don't really have any answers you know i'm not going to be standing here saying my whole life has been disturbed and you know crushed because i'm seeing this news that some people have been doing in terms in an effort to kind of virtue signal and weirdly make it all about them but it is concerning to see you know if any if ever there was indication that we are reaching the end of times you know we see parts of greece was it greece um, legitimately on fire um, obviously parts of America have been on fire for ages Your Australia is going through I don't know 6th, 7th, 10th fucking lockdown um, you know um, there was obviously a mass shooting incident here in Plymouth in the UK with a supposed incel um, it seems that the world is legitimately on fire and the funny thing the weirdly funny thing um, the sadistically funny thing is that there are still parts of the country where people are oblivious or are purposely trying to be oblivious dancing away um, their worries like I have been the last few weeks going to clubs and shit um, with no context or idea as to how good we actually have it still complaining about buses arriving late Uber drivers you know arriving two minutes after the time they're meant to arrive all these really stupid things that we complain about day to day in the west that don't really hold up if you think about it in context especially considering how bleak things were just a few months ago in it so what a wild time to be alive again um thoughts and feelings go out to everybody in afghanistan hold your head up and do what you can in it do what you can next on the list we have this information courtesy of sakai featuring the nike and sakai ld waffle collaborations I've had enough of this shoe. I'm not sure about yourself. I've had enough. I've got a couple of pairs I still haven't worn. Um, I've had enough of the silhouette. It doesn't even... Do you remember when this first dropped and it was really striking to see the double sole unit, to see how exaggerated everything looked, to see the double swoosh, the, the tongue, how the mud guards were, how they fit on your shoe. It, was, it really made you turn your head, right? If you saw someone walking down the street with a pair of Sakai LD waffles or even the undercover racer shoes, whatever, with a little shark tooth thing at the back of the hill, it made you kind of do a little double take. And it was effectively, I think, one of the only shoes in recent years I've seen day to day I've seen regular people wear like people always say oh yeah I see loads of dunks on the street no you don't you see dunks if you go to like trendy parts of East London but for the most part day to day still the one sneaker that reigns supreme is the easy of course and it? it's the one shoe they see people from walks of life wearing a version of the sort of of the 350s right but the LD waffle has definitely been one of the shoes I've seen a lot of people outside of I would say the streetwear fashion bubble wearing day to day and it's quite cool to see because you can definitely see that they've worn them a lot they're their beaters that they wear day to day to work and they hold up and they in my opinion look a lot better if you do wear them day to day um as opposed to treating them like you know sneakers that you can't crease in a toe box but it needs to be also said that i'm tired of the silhouette i'm tired of the shape i'm tired of seeing it in front of my face it feels like the fragment and L, the fragment collaboration specifically the first two in the top it feels like we've seen them on sneaker pages um leak pages for the best part of a year and they're finally starting to drop now um according to this caption it says that the shoe was only introduced in 2019 right and we're only in 2021 now and i'm really tired of the shoe so it feels as if like it's been longer than that it feels like it's been five years ten years whereas it's only been a couple of years a few years sorry that this shoe's kind of been in rotation and already i'm already getting fatigued over it but it is nice to maybe see this might be the final hurrah this overall collaboration so you've got two collaborations with 
fragment, of course, the colors where it's the shoes that we've seen. Disappointed on a navy pair because they decided to um, they decided to color. Is it decided to, what is it colorize? Whatever that word is called. They decided to color the the midsole blue. I think on the original mock up, it did look white as the same obviously as the midsole here but you know they try to make that blue i guess to tie in with the feature on the other grayish colorway shoe so from that notion i would definitely switch preference between the, the navy to the gray um that goes without saying and then of course you've got two colors of the clot um they've just uh, effectively copied the standard i forgot what that year of the something is it year of the dragon whatever that was that air max one they've kind of color, copied the colorway on that and placed that on top of their um ld waffle the gray colorway here is okay not really my favorite has to be said the soul here looks a bit different are they stars or is that kind of a speckled soul Maybe it's a speckled soul so it looks a bit interesting the undercover colorway is pretty decent um this bolt sort of yellowy bumblebee colorway is really nice this sort of like gucci-esque colorway is decent and then you've got another undercover one here at the bottom which might be the best overall i'd say of these three if you're gonna at a stretch if you're gonna say what your favorite side would be i definitely go with the right hand side uh with the navy fragment the kind of you know grayish navyish clot the undercover gucci's type colorway that would definitely be my favorite hands down going forward in those kind of colors but again i'm just tired of the shoe let's read the caption it says this fall nike and sakai will launch free ld collaborations remixing nike and sakai's already iconic 2019 silhouette with nike and sakai partners fragment clot and undercover i guess this is sort of like an asian tie-in as well right um, with the exception of clot all these companies are japanese um so it might be a tie-in it also maybe is a tie-in in terms of their sort of like um little sneaker crew kind of click thing that they have right in terms of collabs these are all people who are all kind of sitting in front row of their shows they're always at the flipping press events in paris and stuff you know um exchanging war stories over flutes of flipping express uh what's the thing called espresso <laughs> fruits of espresso no. fruits of flipping champagne and shit you know whatever that other word is right so that's it feels like a little bit of a tiny it feels like a a little bit of a um, of a inside job in that regard less of yeah that's what it feels like it feels less so and a kind of um shoes for the consumer and more so shoes for the heads which is neither here or there but you know that's what it feels like this is the first drop horizon august 24th and includes two colorways um designed in a folded flooded navy and flooded gray colorways characteristic to the fragment aesthetic Two colorways of Sakai Clot LD or four and three colorways of the Nike Undercover. So it's interesting, you know, right? Fragment gets a little blurb, but then Clot and Undercover just get this is what they are. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we've got a list of when they're due to come out, and obviously with that malarkey. So I guess keep an eye out if you care. I think for me, I'm over them. I'm done. If I don't see another one again, I'll be happy. But you know, Nike and the fact that it's such an easy shoe to get right because of the paneling and how sort of like, you know, modern and classic they both look. I'm sure they're still going to try and push out more pairs. But for me personally, I'm over it. But hey, maybe I'm in the wrong here. Maybe I'm in the wrong moving on we obviously have to talk about this this is courtesy of abc7 news happened a few days ago shoe palace employee fatally shot after intervening in a raffle dispute outside a melrose avenue store absolutely tragic um event um, happened obviously i think a few days ago there is a video circulating which obviously i'm not going to play that shows a guy couple of dudes outside of a store appearing to go down an alleyway or a kind of cul-de-sac of a street and then they kind of get into some sort of altercation one guy starts to kind of pull up his sleeves about to fight and then somebody just pulls out a gun and bam shoots him it looks like towards the abdomen he drops to the floor and everyone runs away and he didn't really know much about the story then obviously it transpires that he allegedly worked at the shoe store he was helping out that day um, there was some sort of dispute about raffles and about um, getting selected in the shoe, whatever it may be. And then it obviously tensions got the better of everybody and it kind of resulted in this fatal incident. And the interesting part of it is obviously there's been no word or any sort of statement made by people like Nike or Adidas and stuff who, in my opinion, have facilitated and pushed people to this point. Um, the constant L's people keep getting on apps like sneakers and uh, weird backward 
justifications for the fact that they don't make enough shoes to satisfy demand and the fact that they still can't operate or still haven't found out a precise method to allow people to purchase shoes in a safe and orderly manner has resulted in these barbaric events that occur where somebody's losing their lives off the back of a fucking raffle you know i mean like i said like the fact that they have reinvented what the term raffle means over the last few years has been mind-blowing back when i was a kid a raffle meant you'd buy a ticket for a nominal fee right a fee that obviously didn't equate to whatever prize you were going to win and that was the whole idea behind a raffle the more tickets you bought the more opportunity you had to basically win prizes that far exceeded the value of the ticket itself but now the term raffle ascertains to the idea of buying an a, 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 buying the opportunity to have an your entry placed in the hat for you then to have another opportunity to then buy the shoe itself now don't get me wrong most of raffles are free but still the premise behind the raffle is that you try you get more for the you get more value for what you actually buy the ticket for whereas in this you there's you know no value whatsoever because you want to buy the shoe you've got the money for it but you have to be lucky to get your your name pulled out of the hat because bots and all that malarkey and backdoors and all this nonsense stuff happens as well in the scene so it's just heartbreaking to see read the article it says a store employee was shot and killed outside his shoe palace in fairfax district on wednesday the shooting happened just before 12 30 p.m near the store located at melrose in north genevieve's avenue the 26 year old man identified by loved ones as J as jirine bradford was shot and taken to a nearby hospital the lapd confirmed he had died the suspect fled the scene and remains on the loose last i heard is a 16 year old kid who got arrested and he's the main suspect so um, I'm, I'm sure I think that's still the case now, but I'm not too sure. Willis's investigator said the incident started over a dispute over a raffle. The store was holding over a pair of sneakers. The employee who was shot was just arriving to work and saw a crowd arguing outside and tried to intervene. A witness said the employees appeared to be trying to de-escalate the situation and was backed away um, and was backing away when he was shot. Video show by an eyewitness showed the employee back into the street away from several men as I mentioned with the several store employees also nearby one of the men suddenly pulls a gun and fires once the group then scatter in other directions and buy a see cover a sign in the store window indicates that the raffle was for a pair of Nike Dunk Low sneakers with black multi camo scheme Nike expected to release a sneaker in public August 18th for retail price of the day the police said that many cameras in the stores and the area and they expect to take several days to review and to retrieve and review the footage loved ones gathered outside the shoe store wednesday to for a memorial to honor bradford so r.i.p to that guy man losing your life over a pair of shoes especially shoes that no one's purchased yet because of a fucking raffle is tragic as hell especially considering everything that's going on in the world to lose your life in that way is just beyond senseless to the kid as well 16 year old kid throwing your life away again for a pair of shoes not specifically the shoes but the raffle itself is completely asinine but again some blame needs to be laid at the feet of these sneaker brands these brands are perpetually putting people in positions where they are getting so irate so flustered so frustrated that they're willing to number one bring a gun out with them when they're going to buy sneakers and two use it if they feel like they've been slighted continually by the brands and continually by the stores themselves in order to purchase shoes that they feel like they can buy with their hard-earned money because don't tell me that this solution couldn't be rectified instantly if they just made more to satisfy demand and don't say oh it doesn't make them limited who cares sneaker industry is no longer limited it's gone mainstream it's a billion dollar industry everybody in your mom knows somebody that quote unquote collects shoes people are reselling all the time there is no such thing as a niche subculture anymore it is part of the mainstream lexicon it's from time complex make complete fairs and gatherings and parties based upon shoes itself then you know it's gone pop and it's never going back if that's the case make more shoes to satisfy demand there's no excuse and if you can't do that make there a solution or a process that allows people to purchase the shoes that they want in an orderly manner why is it i can purchase an iphone i can buy a flipping hermes bag easier than i can buy a pair of dunks it makes absolutely no sense it's idiotic it's artificial um you know um it's artificial flipping scarcity that they purposely do in order to drive demand and for whatever reason sneakerheads just keep lapping it up they just keep opening their mouths willing to get pissed on continually continually get more l's and they get w's and no one complains because at the end of the day no one really cares because if you get your one one w if you're able to secure your one pair suddenly all those l's that you get throughout the years can't continue just get erased which is weird to think of but that's the truth most people don't care about sneakers they don't care about the 
inability to purchase the shoes because they were lucky enough to get x y and z in previous releases and they're just chalking up to be part of the game when it's not it's all been gamed it's all been you know um hoodwinked behind the scenes there are people working within these companies who are you know doing backdoor jobs i know i've heard i've seen i'm not talking out of turn here um and i don't know man and it results in again people losing their lives over this shit and it's just sad it's not worth it and the other day more shoes keep dropping nothing changes and the world will just keeps turning so i don't know um r.i.p that kid um thoughts and feelings go out to his family hopefully the store honors him in the right way possible supports his family and all that malarkey and makes sure that he's looked after because yeah what a sad situation really 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 sad situation um i think that might be it is that the it oh my god da, 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 da. yeah i think that might be it now wow what time do we have here did i use now or do i use less now oh yes just over perfect so that was Jackson Zing Show episode number 484 thanks for tuning in as per you it's been a pleasure to have your company if you're the first time to check out the show please make sure you smash the like and subscribe leave a comment down below and if you listen via the podcast up a five star review and a share will help the show to go a long way but until then take care be safe peace